Hello and welcome to this art lesson. We're going to be exploring warm colors today. So warm colors are colors that make us feel warm, happy, excited, and they also make us think of summer. Um, in this case, I'm using it to represent fall and fall colors or autumn colors. And the colors in the warm color scheme that we're exploring are red, orange, and yellow. So those are all warm colors. Um, so we're going to be creating this lovely autumn leaf artwork that explores blending and layering oil pastels and also incorporates some resist painting um, by also painting on top of our oil pastels with some watercolor paints. So grab some oil pastels and some paint, either watercolor paint or temper paint cakes, whatever you have available, and some thicker paper such as cover stock, cover stock or cardstock. Um, or even construction paper, whatever you have available to you, use that. And my friend, let's dive into creating some autumn leaves with warm colors. Let's make some art. All right, so we're gonna begin our warm color autumn leaf by drawing with a brown. So we're gonna find a brown oil pastel because in this art lesson we're gonna be using both oil pastels and our watercolor paints or temper paint cakes, but we're gonna be exploring very specifically warm colors. And if you don't know what warm colors are, remember these colors are colors that make us feel happy, they make us feel um, excited, they make us feel warm or hot. And they remind us of things like summer or autumn. So warm colors are yellow, orange, red, and the ones in between. So browns, if you think about mixing colors, or you can make the tints of these. And these are all our warm colors. And we're gonna be using them to create our autumn vibe. So we're gonna again begin with that lovely brown oil pastel. And if you don't want to use brown, just use a red or a tan. Or if you want, you can use a blue or a purple. But if you have brown, grab that one first. And we're going to begin by drawing a long curving line from one corner up until the other corner. So here we go. Curving line. Just a slight curve. Nothing crazy. But we don't want it to be perfect because there are no two leaves ever like it. And when we look at leaves, they're all crunched up or curling or bending, depending on how nature has reacted to them. And so they kind of all grow very differently. So we wanna make sure there's an, orga an organic feel to our lovely leaves. All right, we're gonna draw a line on the bottom end for the stem where it came off the tree and then we're gonna go and make a second line up, but this time, and I'm just doing a little sketch so you can see what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna go all the way up, and as we go closer to the top, we're gonna go and get from thick all the way to thin till we get to that point. So here we go. Starting thick, we're gonna follow that line with both our hands and our eyes. And as we work our way up that stem, it gets thinner until it gets to that point. All right, we're gonna draw a nice almost heart shape at the top here. Don't worry if you make a mistake, just adjust your lines as you go. Okay, and we're gonna have a nice gap, so there we go. Our first part of our leaf. Okay, next we're gonna draw one curve on either side, so something like that. So that's what we're gonna do, almost like a big letter C. And when you're ready, you can press firmly and draw that nice curving line or letter C on either side. And then the final one's gonna be kinda like that heart shape where it's a curve with a dimple or a bend in it, something like that, whatever space you have. So here we go. Out and up and there we go, down, dimple in. All right, 
in the middle. We're gonna find what looks like the middle of our stem. We're gonna put two dots. From those dots, we're gonna have lines going up, down on a diagonal, and then we're gonna have two farther up. So when you're ready, you can take those dots, dots and make them thicker and add some smaller stems that branch out into your leaf. Okay, now once you're done, you're gonna take that pastel and you're gonna go around the perimeter of your leaf and you're gonna go over that line a second time and you're gonna notice it goes on a lot more smooth. So this is gonna help us tidy up our lines and make them bold and beautiful. like that and you're gonna find three different spots where you're gonna add some dotted or dashed texture so we're gonna go one and we're gonna find another spot we're just gonna add some dashed lines very gently just dashing your lines to add some texture maybe it was sunburned or it's turning crispy in those areas so you want to add three sections to add some texture to our leaf Okay, and before we switch colors, we're just gonna take our brown and we're gonna just add a nice little quick color up one side of the stems. We're gonna pull our thumb down the stem to color it in like that. And then we're gonna do that on each of the smaller ones. We're just gonna pull our thumb, we're gonna hold our paper with one hand and pull with the other. And that's just gonna make beautiful texture on our leaf. All right, we're ready to switch colors. So pick a new color of oil pastel. I'm gonna grab orange this time. And I'm gonna start off with orange. We're gonna use warm colors, so it has to be a warm color that we're picking. Um, it could be yellow, it could be red, it could be orange. And we're just gonna color in this, these letter V areas between each of the stem sections. It kind of looks like a V, and we're just gonna add some oil pastel before we add paint. So we're gonna add one color, just make it a nice loose color. Now as you see, it's gonna blend in with that brown that we used to draw with. We're gonna do that to all those different sections, just like that. Okay, and then you're gonna grab a second color, and this time I'm gonna choose yellow. And we're gonna slightly overlap that first color so that way it blends and makes a new color. And then has a nice little transition to your second color. So mine's gonna go orange and yellow orange because I mixed my orange and yellow. So that's yellow orange and then yellow. switch to our paints. So we're gonna grab our watercolor paint or our tempera paint cakes and we're gonna dip our brush in water and this is just a bamboo brush. We're gonna load up our brush with water first and then we're gonna keep using our lovely warm colors. So I'm gonna pick my first warm color. We're gonna use two warm colors in the remaining areas of the leaf and then a third one around the edge just a little bit. So I'm gonna use red and yellow paint. Sorry, I'm gonna use orange and yellow in the leaf. I'm gonna keep using orange and yellow, but then I'm going to use um, red around the outside. So you're gonna dip your brush in and then swirl, swirl, swirl in the paint. 
That's a bit of a burnt orange. Let's make it a brighter orange. And we're just gonna go around and add a few different sections of our first color, just like that. You can go right over top of that oil pastel because the oil pastel is going to resist the paint. It means that we, as you can see, I'm painting right over top, but it's not changing it, is it? It's repelling or resisting and even creating this little beady look on there. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna get my lovely red, my red paint. And then I'm gonna, oh no, I did it again, guys. Look at that. I mean, I meant yellow. Okay, switch colors again. Get my yellow. Right, because we're using our warm colors. There we go, got my yellow. And I'm gonna paint in the remaining, the remaining leaf with my other warm color here, which is yellow. Look at that. You can even layer it on top of that other paint color you had. So I mixed mine with that orange, and of course that makes our yellow orange. Painting in all those remaining lines and spaces and areas. Just like that. Making our beautiful autumn leaf. All right, so our leaf is done. So now I'm gonna take my third color, which this time is finally gonna be red. Finally red. I know I've been wanting to use this red for so long. And I'm just gonna go around the outside. I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm not gonna go around the whole edge. I'm gonna go around most of the edge. And I'm gonna leave bit of a white area. I'm just gonna go around and add that red. Now if any bleed outs happen, meaning that the paint from inside the leaf crosses that threshold or that oil pastel barrier created by our leaf outline and goes into the red paint, don't even worry about it. Or if it goes the other way, like for instance, if I accidentally went into my leaf like that, don't worry about it, see it's fine. It mixes with our other warm colors and it adds to the beauty and sometimes our paint decides it wants to do a certain thing and we just gotta let that magic happen. Right, just adds a little bit of artist flavor. We always gotta add some artist flavor to our artworks. Otherwise it's gonna be boring and we don't want our art to look like anyone else's. We don't want it to look like anyone else's. It needs to represent our own marks, just like that. And once you're done, your lovely autumn leaf that explores the warm colors, which are orange, yellow, and red, is done. Hi there, thank you so much for watching the art lesson. Now let's dive into some more ways that you can explore Ms. Artastic art lessons. The place to start is the Ms. Artastic blog. Here it's kind of like a hub for all things Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find links to the podcast where you can find my show notes and listen, um, or you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast player. Just search Ms. Artastic. You're gonna find teaching strategies and resources, free printables, art lessons for kids from the elements of art, principle, principles of design, seasonal art lesson ideas, and holiday art lesson ideas, some of the more popular holidays. But you can find so much more. So it gives you a great place to start. You can find some free lessons by clicking the number one button. And then you can learn a bit about me and find all my blog posts that cover things from back to school, advice for new art teachers, um, talking about the principles of design and how to teach them, tips for teaching visual art to kids, and so much more. Lots of freebies to discover, and this is the Ms. Artastic blog, so make sure you go to MsArtastic.com as this is your first place to start on your Ms. Artastic journey. The next place to go to is the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. You can search Ms. Artastic in the search bar up at the top, and then you can find my store and my lovely gold cat logo here. And this is a great place to start to find amazing art resources. As you can see, there is over 800 different resources to discover. Um, and over here, we have our custom categories. So if you don't want to 
use the search bar, which you could totally search my store over here. But if you don't want to, or if it's a little bit too complicated, you can always find different custom categories to get some inspiration for things you might want to find, like art sub resources, my artivity books that I've created, artists and our history, back to school, elements of art, directed drawing, principles of design, our world, primary art lessons, my roll and draw series, oh yeah, social emotional learning, and of course all of the holidays are in here from Halloween to Earth Day, end of year Easter, St. Patrick's Day spring, and so much more. Um, some of the cool things you might find are elements of art workbooks, I got principles of design workbooks, and so much art history guys. I have gone to town this year and created a lot of art history so you'll find art history workbooks. Um, there's a couple, there's a few different ones. This one is um, modern art history. You'll find Gustav Klimt, um, Georges Seurat, we'll have Alma Woodsy Thomas, Emily Carr, and so much more. In the first one there is artists such as Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe, Jean-Michel Basquiat, Salvador Dali, um, and then I also have Western art history from 1900s to 1990s. So this is a modern art history workbook that goes through all the different modern art history movements from data to surrealism to abstract expressionism to early 20th century art. And I also have a art history, history of Western art, um, prehistoric to 1990s. So from ancient Greece to... Um, to Egyptian art, uh, romanticism, all of that you will find in prehistoric to 1990s, um, but all designed for kids. So you can check it out. I have different levels, primary um, levels, through to middle school of all my different resources. You'll find them at the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers Store. Again, go to Ms. Artastic on TPT. And finally, if you are somebody who wants to dive deep into art and you need a bigger solution. So maybe not just a single solution where you have just a couple of resources, but maybe you need something bigger, a full program that's going to guide you through planning an entire year, provide all the resources for doing that, all the year long plans, all the lesson plan templates, but then also teach you how to plan the year from your back to school to your first week, um, through classroom management and assessment, um, all the way through planning your entire year till the end of the year, setting yourself up with a year A and a year B so you have a rotating curriculum, so you're planning, you're spending less time planning and more time on things you love, like your passions, your family, your fur babies, whatever it might be, um, then you need to check out the Artastic Collective art curriculum. It is my art curriculum designed for art educators. So not only am I going to give you my three-phase proven process for planning an entire year in my art teacher growth course. I'm also going to give you all the resources for the planning part, but also all the lessons as well, whether it's community builders, first week activities, when you're done, um, everything will be included. And as bonuses, you're going to get monthly art teacher challenges and you're going to get a community form that's for all the members of the Artastic Collective to talk on and collaborate together with. And then also I'll be there and you'll get a direct line to me. I will help you anytime you need my support. So this is ArtasticCollective.com and here you're going to find again my art curriculum and other programs for our educators. You can learn about me here. But my friend, this is where you're going to transform. And you can learn more by going to uh, the art curriculum area and there I will walk you through. Enrollment opens every August and January of every year. It is the ultimate art curriculum for our educators and I want to help you through that process of planning. I'm going to make sure that I provide you with all the resources that you need to become the best educator that you can be. And if it's not August or January, then unfortunately you can't join, but you can always get on the wait list and that way you can get the art curriculum that you need to be confident and fully planned without the stress. It is designed for educators and it's going to again help you go from stressed and overwhelmed to calm, happy, and fully planned. So make sure you go to artasticcollective.com right now. Get on the wait list if you are needing a full art curriculum to solve your planning needs. And I will see you next time.